So I was walking along and I wasn't even paying attention. I could, this is one that I could have easily stepped on. I was just running up the hill looking down at the ground and he snapped. I was still about 10 feet away, but he did hiss to let me know. Now this is a, now here as you can see, this is a cotton mouth, but it's almost, you can see how similar it is to a, to a, uh, to a copperhead. Um, the only fact, this, this cotton mouth, has quite distinct its colorations are more distinct than typical a little uh i say typical it's just a lot of times their 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 colors are so dark that you can't really even see the bands in between them and you can see his jaws are really wide of course he's sitting there with his mouth open and he's coiled up and you can see how his neck looks or her neck looks a lot thinner compared to the head and the rest of the body. It's not really so much because the neck is smaller, it's because the head's bigger and the body's bigger. Whereas the water snakes, their head is almost the same size as their body. And the, 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 the pit vipers have much wider heads. So the rattlesnakes, the copperheads, and the water moccasins, also called cottonmouths, have uh, wide, wider jaws. And you can see, and if you can see its eyes, it's pretty warm out, so I don't really want to mess with it too much. He's got enough energy. You can see his eyes look a lot different too. Of course, the mouth is white, cotton mouth. That really white, distinct mouth. Look how much, the distinction between the mouth and the head. But if you look at its head, I don't know how well the phone's picking it up, but that head almost has that copper color in it. And that's because the cotton mouth and the copper head are uh pre they're like oh, some people almost consider them to be a subspecies or of the but they're um they're very they can interbreed in fact you know here on this island if there was any place where you might find copperheads and cottonmouths that were interbreeding quite a bit this would be a place a very good place for that to happen because we have their two environments really bump up to each other they inhabit the pretty much the same environment the copper, the cottonmouth, here on the north end of the island, we have quite a bit of copperheads and cottonmouths, and the pine trees go right up to the sound. And I wouldn't even be surprised if we're not even looking at one that's uh, a hybrid. It's very possible. I mean, if you see how much copper color is in the head of that snake, I wouldn't even be surprised if that is one that is a hybrid. But um, anyhow, that's the poisonous snake right there. A very good example of one. <laughs> and I almost stepped on it.